The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. Joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is Katie Talati. She is head of research and investment firm Arca. Good morning, Katie. Morning. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, so before we get into that, you, you did a report on some of the smaller cryptos, the altcoins. But but I, I, I do have to ask you, of course, about Bitcoin breaking above 17,000. It seems that at, at least for the time being that, uh, you, you know, we, we were looking at people were talking about going down to 13 even uh, and then some. Do you think that that we've generally turned a corner or is this still is this sort of like a short term gain because of just uh, illiquid markets or re- relatively thinner markets right now in, in crypto? I think it's a combination of uh, all those factors. Um, I would say actually one thing that you know hasn't been talked about in a few weeks, just because all of the uh, inner happenings at cri- in crypto recently have been so eventful with um, FTX, um, with FTX going under, <clears throat> Genesis potentially also going under, and other kind of contagion effects. Um, we've kind of ignored the fact that like uh, at the end of the day, <clears throat> a lot of people are still kind of watching macro as like the longer term outlook Um, and, you know, kind of we've gotten mixed signals as of recently from the Fed with Jerome Powell's latest uh, statements being more of like a soft soft landing. But then also on the flip side, some of the data is indicating that the economy is still very strong and that we're going to continue to raise rates, Um, you know, in a macro environment. Bitcoin and pretty much every other digital asset isn't going to perform quite as well. Um, and then, as you said, I think that combined with the fact that liquidity is quite a bit lower than it was previously has really led to, you know, violent moves one way or the other. I would say, however, um, you know, I don't make price predictions, but I do think that we probably saw the bottom in terms of like market prices and sentiment in the last like few weeks. You mentioned uh, volatility, and I see with some altcoins in your blog, you've mentioned Serum, Aave, and Ape. What can you tell us about the, all these altcoins and the trends they're in? Sure. Um, so Serum actually has been a pretty interesting one to follow following the FTX um, downfall. If you're not familiar, Serum is a um, decentralized finance project built on Solana but they were mostly incubated and created by FTX. So FTX was really like the owner of most of the tokens. Um, this is one of the projects that a lot of people were um, critical of them as they owned like a large amount of the float and were likely using that as collateral. Um, so Serum uh, during the uh, unwind basically uh, made a decision as a community to actually fork the original Serum code base because the um, private keys that were used to update the code base were actually held by um, members at FTX and not of the Serum community. So the um, majority of the project decided that they wanted to fork the protocol and create what was what's now called OpenBook, which is a version of Serum <clears throat> that is under the control of the uh, community versus uh, individuals at FTX. Um, and the Serum project itself has actually even decided to say, like, we're going to wind down. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there were a lot of, like, knock-on effects of, you know, potentially having a project that had an exploit in it. All right. And we're also noticing uh, Bitcoin lagging as we see an unwinding of the Fed trade. Uh, also, we're seeing a lift in U.S. stocks above the 200-day average. What can you tell us about any correlations or non-correlations between the markets and Bitcoin? Um, I would say for now, honestly, that correlations between crypto and traditional markets are probably not there. We just had a really volatile kind of black swan event that nobody was um, expecting. Um, I think if crypto you know, seems to trade close to the S&P, I think that correlation is at least done for now. Um, it probably will return until there is some sort of catalyst for digital assets that kind of link it to, you know, move higher in some way or lower. Um, but for now, I think, you know, a lot of it's going to be one macro trade as it is for most asset classes. So getting back a little bit to the altcoins, and this ties in with, with, with this general discussion, what's, what's driving now the the, the I hate the term, but tokenomics. What's driving the values that we're seeing in the markets for altcoins, uh, given all these macroeconomic backdrops and also the fact that 
there's just a general loss of faith in amongst many in the retail and institutional in crypto in the wake of FTX and Genesis and Three Arrows and on and on and on. But what's what's now driving the, the supply and demand? I mean, on a pure tokenomics level, there's definitely been conversations within the industry about, you know, creating better token value accrual mechanisms. Um, I think to date, we're, you know, still kind of figuring out what is the right recipe for that for, um, you know, digital assets that are outside like a layer one technologies or any of the app products, um, you know, and you are seeing um, products trying to kind of change that, uh, that mechanism in order to better capture value. Um, for example, Uniswap, the largest decentralized exchange, put out a proposal late last week um, to institute what's called the fee switch which would allow, um, which would uh, take away some of the fees from liquidity providers on Uniswap and pay it back to token holders. Um, this has been kind of something that people have been watching for a long time, like I said, to provide value to token holders in that way. But, but what's ultimately, um, in terms of the, the market's view of the, the long-term use of these altcoins, other than to trade, I mean, it, it seems to be now for the past several years, it, it's, this whole promise of this will be, uh, you know, be, there are all these applications that will eventually be on this protocol or that protocol. Yet now it feels as if people are kind of saying, well, gee, gosh, these alts might not make it. Um, it has that has that mood really changed in terms of what people are willing to buy and sell uh, in the market? Have, have people lost faith in, in the altcoins in general? No, definitely not. And I would actually say, I mean, I think based on what you're saying is that like a lot of layer one alternative layer ones to Ethereum, for example, may not be kind of like investable right now. Um, I, you know, that might be the case. I think there's a lot of projects in digital assets that don't have necessarily a lot of unique features about them. They might be forks of other code bases just released on different chains. Um, they could also be um, they could also, like I said, be like alternative layer ones trying to kind of rebuild the Ethereum ecosystem. But in reality, um, you know, just I think saying kind of broadly that like every token outside of Bitcoin doesn't, you know, have value or a purpose just because we've got quite a few, you know, copycats, I guess, right now um, doesn't necessarily isn't representative, I guess, of the industry. I do think that a lot of people are taking a hard look at tokens and saying, is this a valuable project? Does this token matter for the project? Does this project have users? And they're evaluating investments that way.